Hi guys, I can only have one fool of the week, but my god, Penny Mordaunt would have certainly been in the lead to win it this week when she appeared on the Ridge show on Sunday. Now, the leader of the House was challenged on why the government isn't taking a leading role in helping resolve the strikes, be them in the NHS, public sector or the railways. Morden tried to suggest here that strikes harm workers and the only people who benefit from them is the Labour Party. Have a listen to this. To do that. Well, I, I can't speak for Mr Lynch or Ms Cullen or the BMA, but I suspect that if they were here, they'd say... They're not, much, they're not very helpful to you, but they might be helpful to these striking workers. And let, so let me ask you again. It's going to happen. Is the government's view still that it cannot play a role in avoiding these strikes? Strikes are not helpful to striking workers. No, but that's not the question I'm strikes, asking you. Well, I'm asking it's, you it's, what the government can and what, can what do. Let me what you said, because it's important. Striking workers lose pay out of their pay packets when they're on strike. If their union demands are met with an inflationary pay rise, they lose because that equates to about £1,000 extra in tax per household and you, you, it doesn't help on, uh, on the issue we, that everyone is facing on inflation. Strikes do not help striking workers. Strikes only help the Labour Party. But Is she really that stupid or is she pretending to be that stupid? That's my question. Now, a number of things she said here, um, you know, strikes don't help workers. What are workers supposed to bloody do? Because, and this is something that really pisses me off when it comes to journalists. They never ask this question. They never say, okay, what should the striking workers do? What should the workers do instead of striking? You don't like them going on strike. What's the alternative? Can't tell us the alternative. I'd love to hear it. I've never actually heard a journalist ask a politician, what's the alternative to striking? Now, because if they say, well, they should just sit down with the, the, uh, the, the employers and negotiate. Well, the trade unions tried to, that, to do that when it came to the rail network. They sat down with the rail operators. And what happened? The government interfered and scuppered a deal. On purpose, not by accident, on purpose. Mick Lynch has mentioned this a number of times. They were very close to a deal. And then what happened? The transport secretary interfered and introduced a new measure that they knew that the trade unions would not accept. And it scuppered the deal. And they were back into back to square one again. And the strike action was on, on the cards again. So... You know, first of all, she avoided the question here. She was asked, "What? Why isn't the government getting involved? Or what? What, what can the government do?" She started talking about, "Oh, they, they shouldn't go on strike." Once again, what is the alternative to striking? You don't want them going on strike. You're saying it's bad for the workers. It doesn't help them. What's the alternative, Penny Mordaunt? And then finally, the stupidest statement probably all year so far: strikes help the Labour Party. And unfortunately, she wasn't asked a simple question. How? How do they help the Labour Party? Please explain. Go into detail here. Give us a step-by-step -step, uh, process of how this is helping the Labour Party. Because Keir Starmer has advised his front bench not to join the strikes. Leading uh, trade unionists like... Um, Mick Lynch have criticised the Labour Party for not supporting the strike. The party itself, not members and um, MPs, individual MPs have joined the strikes, have joined the picket lines, have met with strikers. Um, but how is this helping the Labour Party? And the fact that the RMT union, the most vocal probably, the most popular in the country, the most known I should say, doesn't actually is not affiliated with the Labour Party. Just absolute rubbish. And once again, is she this stupid or is she pretending to be stupid? I think it's the latter. She knows that the, the public, her supporters in the public, don't understand this. And we're, oh, well, the, the Labour Party, they're traditionally uh, connected to the, the workers. That means it must be helping them in some way. We saw in a select committee how a, a Tory MP was trying to, was trying to ask the trade union bosses, uh, do you get your marching orders from the Labour Party? 
And the response was laughter. Hang and about. it's the same attitude, Trevor, that, hang about, hang that about. brought you, you, miners you, you, out you've got, you've got... on strike at the start of the warmest summer on record. It's the, it's the same old dogma and situation. The only thing that is going to enable us to make progress on, on the genuine issues that certain sectors are facing is, is discussions. Yes. Discussions around... But you scupper the discussions. Hang Stresses on. on the NHS and, and all of hang that. Out, hang on, hang on. That is what secretaries... You can going tell them that there's not helpful to them till you're blue in the face, but from their point of view, if they get a pay right, that is going to be helpful, surely. I mean, that's not what, it, they're, not that's what embeds, they're there for. Not if it embeds inflation. But it's not embedding inflation. They didn't get a pay rise last year and inflation was above 10%. So obviously that argument is complete and utter crap. How can she get away with this? Talking absolute twaddle and not challenged on it. He tried to challenge her a bit, but then they move on to the next topic. Like, she said, this helps the Labour Party. How does it help the Labour Party? Explain. Uh, um, if we give people pay increases, that will get, that will help, that will funnel, that will, sorry, um, that will impact inflation. How? It hasn't before. How will it do it now? Because last year people didn't get a pay increase. You were saying we can't give people a pay increases because inflation is high. Inflation is due to drop this year, down to about 5%. And you're still saying, oh, well, we can't give people pay increases because inflation. Uh, no, um, they, they are. It's, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, a, it's but, a myth that strikes are helpful. They're not. How do... The reason we have certain rights and protections is because of strike action. The reason we have a weekend was in the past people went on strike, demanded better paying conditions, demanded sick pay. All of these things that we have today are thanks to trade unions going on strike. They do help workers. You're just talking twaddle again. Not. They, they exacerbate uh, financial problems for the very people going out on strike and they also are going to have a knock-on effect on okay. uh, cancelled appointments on missed education uh, it's it's not good for the country and i'd encourage people not to do it yeah so once again what's the alternative penny penny tell us the alternative don't go on strike it's causing it's causing damage to the economy it's causing damage to the nhs the nhs that has been underfunded that has been privatized by you people you are the people who are responsible for the problems we, people are facing. Nurses and doctors and medical staff and, and others within the NHS are at breaking point. That's why they're going on strike. It's not just pay, but it's also conditions. Staffing levels. All of these things have been damaged by your government, your party. And now you're turning around and saying, don't go on strike, please, because it's bad for you. What's the alternative? Well, actually, I don't have to provide an alternative because the journalist never bloody asked me that question. <sighs> Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about all of this. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. But something really needs to change. Something has to change. We need to start challenging these people, calling them out on this crap.